Uh, oh. um, next on, we have uh, representative report reports. So first up, we've got, uh, let's see, uh, Deputy County Librarian Stephen Fitzgerald to present uh, the County Library and, com and Community Library reports for the month of October to the commission. Oh, hit the button. Good evening. Hey, there we go. Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Good. 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 Um, so you'll see in your packet, we have the uh, the October stakeholder report for the county. Uh, so the big news is, of course, we have Dolores Puerta, an exhibit in Gilroy Library, uh, starting on November 5th. Of course, she was a, a leader of the UFW uh, Farm Workers Union um, drive in the 1960s. Um, so it's an exhibit sponsored uh, in part with the Smithsonian Institution, uh, and it starts on November 5th, and it runs through towards the end of January. Also exciting news is the fact that we will have Dolores Huerta there herself, uh, speaking at a panel event right across the street from the Gilroy Library in the Wheeler Center. Um, I am unfortunately sad to say that we have already filled up that exhibit, that uh, <laughs> panel discussion went like that. Like, I think it was like, in the first weekend, it was totally full. So. Uh, but she will be speaking there with, um, let's see, we have Jimenez and Valdez, uh, also uh, very prominent Hispanic leaders in the community. Uh, so it'll be a panel discussion. And if you would like, you can watch it later uh, via re recording. So keep your eye out for that. It should be really uh, eventful. And if you can make it down to the Gilroy Library, please see the exhibit. Um, we're really excited to be hosting that. Uh, we also have the Distinguished Author Series coming up. Uh, so we've had two events already, but the third and final event will be on October 22nd. And this is with uh, Dr. Daphne Miller, who will be speaking about health, food, and agriculture with the goal of building a healthier and more resilient food system. Mm. And she'll be having a discussion with uh, Supervisor Joe Simidian. So mm. if you can join that. Uh, that one is at our, I think it's at De Anza. I turned the page too quickly there. Yeah, De Anza College. Uh, again, on October 22nd, which is a Saturday. So if you could make that, we'd love to see you there. Uh, we also have an important staff announcement. We have another new deputy county librarian, Marlene Iwamoto, who has been with the county for a very long time. Uh, she was actually the supervising librarian of adult and teen services right here in Campbell Library at uh, one time. So uh, we're excited to have her join our team and I'm sure you'll see her in the future. Uh, finally, we have uh, homework help at the library. So if you know students that need some assistance uh, and would benefit from speaking with someone to, to help with their homework at any of our library locations, unfortunately not the Campbell Express Library right now, but we would have had it in the Campbell Library. Um, but at our Cupertino, Gilroy, Los Altos, Bopitas, Morgan Hill and Saratoga locations. Um, and I should also point out that we have BrainFuse also, which is an online tutoring uh, service. So if your Campbell students can't make it out to one of those libraries, please you know, encourage them to use our, our online service as well. And that concludes my county librarian report, unless anybody has any questions. I see none, so I will continue with the uh, Campbell Library specific report. Um, so we just have some data here from uh, August. So we had 8,294 people visit the Campbell Express Library. Uh, I'm sorry, did everybody have that one too? Okay. Um, we had uh, 21 programs where 1,100 people plus attended. So we're really happy with that number. Um, in July, we had 37,000 checkouts for the adults and teens and 22,000 for children. And we issued 500 plus new cards. So really good numbers. Uh, we're really happy with that given um, uh, the fact that we're in that temporary space. So go Campbell. Um, back in, well, it's been now, I guess, officially in September, Peggy Tommaso retired. So your long-term community librarian uh, decided to uh, leave us and go live the rest of her happy life um, that we're, we're all rooting for her to have. Um, so we're really excited to see that, you know, she was able to leave um, uh, and enjoy her retirement. And then joining us next, we'll have Nicole King, who is also a supervising librarian here at Campbell. She was a children's supervising librarian here not too long ago, but she will be the new community librarian starting on October 17th, which I guess it is Monday. So I'm sure you will see her going forward. That's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Stephen.
Thank you very much. All right. Okay, let's see. Next up, let's see. Let me stick to the script. I now invite Tina Wong Erling, the Senior Services Supervisor from the Adult Center, to provide an Adult Center update for the month of October. Buffer and members of the Civic Improvement Commission. It has been a long time. I, it's been several months, and I frankly don't know um, a couple of you. <laughs> so I'm myself. Uh, I've been at the Adult Center for uh, 10 years, hard, hard to believe. Um, and uh, I, I'm proud to say that the Adult Center provides um, wonderful programs for older adults in the Plus. Uh, and, uh, um, our program side encompasses classes, trips, um, drop in programs such as groups and clubs, um, a robust lunch program, um, as well as the social services. If any of you are interested in getting acquainted with our program, um, I'd love to give you a tour. Chat my phone. Um, we, we, I, I think it, it's better if we get a visual. What goes on in the life of the adults and the teachers, be able to grasp um, the impact of the teachers. So, with that, I'll get into my, um, my report. So, I'd like to start with some happy, happy news. And that we, we did hire a program coordinator in July. Um, that's been three months, time, time flies. Uh, so, we did hire Priscilla Martinez. Um,
what is the um do you have how far out are your field trips booked like do you have that do you have them scheduled for the remainder of the year or yeah so we decided to do kind of a soft launch mm -hmm. deal plan mm -hmm. to the fall we have one last friday and we have one in the remainder of the year so we decided to do that the first one in Monterey was quite sold out, but we did pretty well. It was two-thirds school, mm. and uh, we we will. Um, <laughs> Some of them still wear their masks. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We appreciate the report. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we've got City Manager Brian Leventhal to provide the city update and discuss upcoming CIC, CIC items. Yeah, uh, just briefly on, on a city update, um, I'll be brief um, on that. Um, obviously, the city's been very busy. Uh, in the community development planning, advanced planning uh, realm, uh, you've all heard about our housing element and of course our general plan. Um, and that is continuing to progress. Um, we anticipate um, some additional council meetings on the housing element uh, at the end of this uh, end of November, beginning of December, to kind of hone in the final housing plan uh, that we'll move forward to. We have submitted a draft housing plan to the state and we've uh, are just uh, um, starting to get back their comments on those. So uh, as we assimilate those uh, and prepare uh, to respond to those, we'll come to the council in November. Um, that of course is really gonna set forth our housing plan for the city of Campbell over the next eight years. Uh, and it's significant in the housing numbers that we're looking at adding into the community of at least 3000 units, but more likely closer to 4,000 uh, by the time we add some, some, uh, some buffer in that zone. Um, right now, the numbers that we have uh, in the plan is closer to 6,000 units, um, but we anticipate to kind of funnel that down. We started large, and as we uh, eliminate sites, those numbers will come down. Uh, so we can pick those that are most viable or most preferable and not just uh, uh, throw darts at the dartboard and hope it gets built. So we'll hone those, those numbers down. That will happen at the end of November, beginning December. Also, uh, a significant issue in the planning realm uh, is objective standards. And this is the, the way that uh, under new state legislation uh, that we'll have to regulate the look of buildings going forward. The concept that, um, that we've typically built design guidelines in cities over the, the last several years has been um, compatibility with the neighborhood, looking uh, to, to understand visual impacts, kind of you, you know good design when you see it. But it's very hard to articulate that. New state law requires that um, we articulate that in an objective fashion. So when I say we've been working on objective standards, that's what I'm referring to, instead of subjective standards. So the old neighborhood area plans that would say things like uh, new construction needs to comply with the neighborhood character go out the window. And we actually have to say in objective standards what that means, how tall, how big, how wide, um, and we're going through that exercise as well. It will fundamentally change the way that we do design review in cities. Um, for most people, they could probably care less until it's something being built next door to them uh, or if they're trying to build. Um, the idea is it will make more predictable for developers, for builders, for homeowners that want to do construction, what's accepted and what's not accepted. And it's not subject to we'll know it when we see it and you come to the hearing and, and there's a surprise because people don't can't agree to whether it complies with neighborhood character. So that that is an important thing we're doing as well. Also one to mention 
that we're making progress on our parklet program. You've probably heard um, council discussions if you've uh, been um, uh, listening to the council meetings on parklets. Uh, we're speaking, uh, when we talk about parklets, we're talking um, specifically about the downtown uh, Campbell area between the railroad tracks and um, uh, the west side of the downtown. And there's been temporary parklets, as you're well aware there. Um, the council has been interested in exploring a semi-permanent parklet program. When you talk semi-permanent, it really for all intents and pur purposes is permanent. But if over time you decide to remove them, they can be removed without a lot of damage to city streets. So uh, we're progressing on that. Uh, the plan was originally to um, provide um, very little subsidy on the actual cost where the city was gonna do the pre-design work and hand the architectural plans and the options to the, the businesses. They could choose from those options. They would fund the construction. The city would permit it, much like we would any other encroachment into our right-of-way. Uh, the council at their last meeting uh, discussed um, actually supplementing that with grants up to $40,000 per business um, with a maximum cap of $400,000 uh, in the program. So that was a substantial addition. It was a, a substantial change in the philosophy of looking at parklets. Uh, we had estimated from our uh, conversations with businesses uh, of eight to 10 businesses that may be interested, uh, but that was before we're now offering $40,000 a piece. Um, there are some complexities to that um, because um, there is, there's laws about how we give out public funds. And so there will be a hearing uh, coming up to dedicate those funds um, and follow state procedures for issuing those. So stay tuned on parklets. Um, the goal was to try to get construction on these started in January, but this grant program that was just added is gonna create some complexities. We'll take some time to implement. So that may get pushed off a couple of months. Um, the, then the other thing I also wanted to report on, uh, and I mentioned this in my, uh, I think the June report, the last report in the minutes you just approved, um, was uh, talking about the council elections that are coming up. Obviously, November's um, election time. As you're aware, um, we have uh, districts now in, in Campbell. We have five districts. And so we, not every district has an election every election cycle. This cycle for elections, it's districts three, four, and five that have council members up for elections. The residents are in the other districts don't get a vote for council members this cycle. Um, but in two years, they will get a vote in districts one and two. So for districts three, four, and five, and I, I think you're all aware, uh, we did not have more than one candidate file in any one of those districts. So we have one candidate in each district. The council had determined to not cancel the elections, um, which they could have done since there's just one candidate. But, but by not canceling the elections, it allows for a write-in process that is coming to a close in the, in the coming days. Uh, there was a window for write-in candidates to get qualified. It's not just simply putting a name on the ballot. They have to go through a very similar qualification process of getting signatures um, and getting qualified by the, the register of voters um, to be on the ballot. Uh, and that will close. So assuming no one files in the, in the last couple of days here of that filing period, uh, it looks like we'll have one candidate in each district. There will still be a ballot. You'll still see them. Um, in fact, your, your ballot should have been mailed to you already. You probably have those with one council member in each district. Um, of those, one council member is an incumbent, the other two will be new to the city, um, sort of. Uh, but for intent, all intents and purposes, even the, the candidate that had served on the council years ago, um, it's been many years. And, um, and so we're, we're treating them as if they're new because uh, the processes have changed um, and maybe the learning curve is a little bit more shallow for them. But, um, we do anticipate onboarding at least two new council members, plus uh, uh, reseating an incumbent uh, in December, uh, the elections are in November, but we'll actually change council members at the second meeting in December. And you're all welcome to attend that as a ceremonial meeting. We'll usually have refreshments uh, here to help celebrate both the outgoing and the service of our council members that are outgoing and recognizing the new council members are coming in. So. That is it on the city update. Um, I did want to jump into, unless there's questions on that, into the work plan. I, I did have a question actually. What um, What's the fiscal impact of canceling um, the election of city council members if there's no competition? I mean, what, what is the it was fiscal about a, impact a, saving? It would, it, would have been, it would have been a net savings of about $56,000. And um, the council debated that, uh, whether or not that was a worthwhile expenditure, but it really felt that in today's culture that we have of being open um, and, and, and 
the politically charged environment that we're in, it was money well spent to give the public an opportunity to speak to those candidates that did file. And if they felt strongly, then they should go out and campaign for someone to, to file as a writing candidate and uh, give the voters that choice instead of taking that away for that $56,000. And it, it wasn't an easy discussion in the council, to be honest. They went back and forth and it was a very uh, productive discussion, uh, ended up not canceling the election. Um, some cities did, and that's a, a political choice, um, but our, our council chose to, to go ahead and make that expenditure to leave that option open. And in that same vein on the parklets, the the, is the grant, the $40,000 grant per business for construction of the parklets, is that, how is that funded? Uh, well, essentially it's gonna be funded out of ARPA money. Um, it, it, there's no dedication for it, but any, any excess funds that we're expending over revenues is gonna come out of ARPA and that's the way that that would balance, so. Wow. When I speak of ARPA, that's the, the rescue funds that we got from the federal. I'm yeah. sorry if I use that term loosely, yeah. but. Yeah. Mm. And just one other in regards to the parklets. So does it does it look like there'll be any, any opportunity for any art, artistic input on our part? Uh, the, well, they did pre-approve some design options. Um, the design options don't have a lot of opportunity for artwork on them, but there will be art embedded in them. Oh. Um, and so um, we'd be glad to show, show you the sample designs. We can pull that from the staff report mm -hmm. and send that to the commission so you can see that. But the concept is... Um, we don't want to dig into the asphalt and do foundation under the asphalt. So everything structurally has to be done above. And so there'd be some concrete, for lack of a better term, a concrete seat around the perimeter of it that serves as, a, as, as the, the heavy base that holds the structure. And then um, a, a steel frame structure uh, that will be artistic um, and a screen that goes around the kind of the, this the three to four foot range as you're sitting, just that kind of that, that, that privacy screen around it mm. that will be um, a laser etched uh, steel design with the, um, the city of Campbell um, a tree or water tower etched into the steel design, uh, actually cut into the design kind of silhouettes based on the business's desire. So they'll all be somewhat uniform, but somewhat they'll have an artistic uh, approach to them at least. Um, and those range uh, in, in, when I talk about city subsidy of 40,000, that, that won't cover the cost. The range of construction of these range depends on whether you, there's a, a, a ceiling or a, a roof to it or not between 75 and, and $95,000 for these. So 40,000 is just a piece of that construction cost, not the entire cost. Other questions? Any, yeah, any other questions or comments? Or Okay, so um, to get a little bit more into the meat of tonight's discussion, um, we've included in your packet um, a copy of the major work plan item, uh, major work plan uh, for this upcoming calendar year um, and some ge generic dates. I, I don't know that we need to go through this item by item, but I, I did wanna put this before you as we're trying to bring on uh, new commissioners and bring them on board. Um, it's October now and we don't want to lose steam for the next year. So this is what we have for the work plan for the upcoming year. Uh, and you can see the dates. Uh, some of them are, are more broad. Uh, some of them have specific dates with regard to the social service subgrant program. Um, we're about to kick that off here shortly. And as you recall with the social so service subgrant program, it's a two year program that we operate in that this commission kind of comes up with a proposed budget for two years. Um, we're now in the second year of that proposed budget. Um, to complicate that process a little bit more, the council budgets, budgets annually and allocates budgets to this commission annually. So even though we develop a two-year plan every year in June, that plan is subject to the council pre-funding. So we've got this year's budget. It was approved in June for the social service subgrants. Um, and so we, we plan on following the normal process unless there's revisions um, that we need to make to this. Uh, and you can see the dates there that, that we'll release applications coming December 5th um, with a deadline of January 27th for those to apply. Um, and then I'm not gonna read all these dates here. You could follow those study session, public hearings and, and uh, council action. Um, when we speak of council action tentatively, that would be for probably next year's grant budget allocation. This year, we've already got a budget allocation. so. 
we, we don't have to go back and ask for more money. We've got our allocation, but we will be proposing a budget for next year for the council's consideration. So that's what that refers to. Um, moving on uh, on the neighborhood grant, um, association grant applications, you can see those dates will follow shortly thereafter. There's a little bit of overlap. Um, those will start in uh, February. And these are for the neighborhood associations to apply for um, those neighborhood grants. I'm sorry, yes, and that says 22, those dates say 22, but all those should be 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, that is our um, work plan uh, for the upcoming year. Um, if there's a desire um, to add, delete, discuss, um, we can bring that back. That tonight was just kind of the intent to put forward uh, kind of what's on the schedule and get any initial reactions. If we need to bring back any future discussion, we can do that. But as Diana said, our focus really is on the next upcoming project, which is a social service subgrants. And it is coming up in December um, and, and kicking off on that. So what was the approved allocation for this it, cycle? Fifty five thousand, I think it was, was the budget amount. And Brian, you had mentioned earlier that um, that's already been approved. And so there's not going to be any just like there won't be a budget request for this year. But I think as we talk about this, one of the things as part of that discussion will be what do we want to request for next year? Right. But it's and a two year cycle. Right? But it's a two year cycle so, for us, but the council budgets annually. So I we'll see. recommend okay. a budget for this year and then we'll recommend a budget for next year as well, even though. Um, Even though it's we may have made that decision okay. this this year on what the two year funding request is, it, they won't approve the second year funding till next year. Thanks. And we'll have that discussion a little bit, um, probably as we do our mid year report to the Council in uh, January, February and probably in February. Um, we'll have a good idea of where we're landing this year and what our target's going to be next year. And that'll give us a good leapfrog of, do we make the same request? Do we up the request? Do we have to bring it down? I, I think there might be some room for some additional funding perhaps next year if the budget looks good. I know the last couple of years has been tight. So um, any other questions on the social service subgrants or the general work plan items that we're showing you? Right. Okay. So I guess moving on to uh, yeah, there's no action necessary on that. It was just for your information. So okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. And then I guess at this point we're moving on to new business. Yes, uh, I'd be glad to introduce this item as well. And as I introduced Angelique uh, to the group earlier, um, she has worked um, on this extensively. Um, so um, she is really the best resource on this, but I'll introduce the item and, and she can help with uh, any questions you have on this. Um, the, in your packet, I think it's the very last page of your packet, if I'm not mistaken, um, is a, there we go, we gotta get to the last page. The very last page of your packet is a draft um, council policy. We were asked by the city council to come to them with a concept for a code of conduct for boards and commissioners, um, not because any of you are doing anything nefarious or there's any concerns with specific co commissioners, but there's been some things that come up over time. And obviously um, we like to improve and always do better at what we do. It, and so the council started asking the question of whether or not we should, instead of when issues come up, reacting to the issues, if we shouldn't, be better uh, by setting expectations for everyone. So we know the rules, so to speak, that we play by. 
and so that you don't have um, um, unintended consequences. Uh, and for most part, I think all of our boards and commissions are well intended with their actions. I think everyone's operating in the best interest of the city. But what we're talking about here are things that may not rise to a level of a legal issue where the city attorney says you can't do that. Um, there's a certain legal uh, standard for conflict interest, things you have financial interest in, right? You can't be self-serving. You can't support businesses that you have investments in. You can't make decisions based on your property value or the financial impact to you. You can't make financial decisions on things that may um, uh, benefit you or hurt you financially or your employer or a source of income to you. And those things are all set in law. And we're not talking about those things. What we're talking about is, is issues that may transcend that, that are what we call ethical dilemmas. That, that I may look at one way and you may look at a different way and neither of us are legally right or wrong, but they're ethical dilemmas. And um, the Markla Center at Santa Clara University has an applied ethics program there and the city participates in that. And, and most of the cities in Santa Clara participate. We do regular training and we talk about these things. I mean, there's a whole study in ethics, right? And it's not right, it's not wrong, but that's why it's more important that if there's gonna be expectations in those areas, you set them forth because a commissioner may do something thinking, I, I, me personally, I think this is ethically okay. And, and they may not be wrong because there's no right or wrong answer to that. Um, and so we explored this discussion with the council um, and we've come up with a draft policy. The council wanted us to uh, bring the draft policy to all the boards and the commission because this isn't a top down, take it or leave it approach. You really want to engage the commissions and understand their concerns and questions. Um, and it, it's not intended to be punitive or put shackles on what we do, but really just hit the main areas where we have repeatedly see issues come up and make sure those clear. And we've touched on a few of those topics that you see here um, at, at the bottom of this page, when you talk really about prohibitive, prohibited actions involving a perceived conflict interest. So we talk about a perceived conflict. We're again, talking about those areas that aren't a legal conflict. We're, we're going beyond that. We're assuming that we're all gonna comply with that. We're all required to comply with that anyway. If you step in a direction that causes problems with legality, we will talk, we will have a conversation, I may refer you to the city attorney. These are, these are ethical things. So the two bullet points were the two areas that we focused on in this, uh, and we can certainly um, elaborate on them, but it's representing or appearing or speaking on behalf of a person or organization with which you're a member of or affiliated with on a matter that comes before a body in the city, whether it's a city council or another commission. So for instance, if you represent, you know, Little League of America um, uh, for, for, for Little League Baseball, and you want, you want to come and, and represent them to the Parks and Rec Commission because they're building a baseball field, that would probably not be appropriate under this because you're using your influence as a commissioner to represent to another commission something that you're affiliated with. There is other opportunities. There's someone else from that affiliation that could present. Um, and it doesn't restrict you from those affiliations. It just restricts you from, from representing them to city or city boards and commissions. Um, likewise, um, represent or appearing or speaking on behalf of your personal organization, which the member is affiliated before another governmental agency on a matter pending before that governmental agency that has come or will come before the city council or any city board or commission, which the city has not made a final decision. Um, so um, going to another city, for instance, my family's San Ramon, California, and I wanna go talk to the city council in San Ramon about their housing policies, because it's important to me. I show up at San Ramon city council meeting and say, I, as a planning commissioner from the city of Campbell, think you should do these things. And when you do that, we ask the question, why, why are you using your title? Is your purpose your title so that there's some influence that they, the people you're speaking to know, you're a planning commissioner, you must know what the heck you're talking about because you're a planning commissioner and you're doing it to get greater credence to the, to the response from them. That's probably not ethically appropriate under this policy. Some would say that I have no problem with that. Others would say it's probably not ethical. So we're trying to define those areas. And those are the two key areas we've seen, not necessarily with any of these, any of you or any of these commissioners, not about you individually, 
um, but just as a city with all of our commission, just setting those rules forward. So that's kind of the gist of what we're talking about. Um, council didn't have any expectations of a formal report back, but we did want to get your input. We will share with the council if there's any questions, concerns, um, or, or uh, input that you have. Uh, we'll be coming back to them uh, probably uh, November 15th, or I think the first meeting in December, if not, once we've had a chance to circle to all the boards and commissions, I think uh, um, Parks and Rec, Planning Commission, um, the Rental Fact-Finding Board, um, what other commissions? But a few other commissions. But anyway, once we have had a chance to circle back, tonight was our opportunity here. Um, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Maybe you want to take a chance to digest this based on what I've said, and there's some other input. Um, we don't need your input all tonight, but if there's something you, input you would like to share, we'd be glad to take that back to the council. If after this meeting you have some additional thoughts to share, Angelique or my, I, I or Diana, we'd be glad to take your comments and we'll share those as well. So, so I know I want to kick things off with uh, what was it? Was it a study session when they first discussed it, or it was open for public? Comment? It was a it was a public it was a regular meeting. It was a regular okay. Yeah. So, um, I, when I saw this come up on the city agenda, I was actually the only person that came and made a public comment. Um, and I, I, I wanted to share my thoughts on um, a variety of topics. One, I said, you know, number one, please don't make it when you, if you do come up with this policy, if you feel compelled to actually put this into a, a document, um, don't make it big uh, so that, it, you know, somewhere down the line, there might be some unintended consequences of, of having this policy. Um, I also mentioned, you know, are, are there things that you're trying to fix that could be fixed maybe with a better orientation or training before someone even steps into the role? Um, and there and there was there was some discussion of that as well. And, and there was also a concern on the council's part, which I think was great on their part, that they were concerned about stifling um, anybody's, you know, like First Amendment rights and not being able to, to speak about Mind certain blown. things. So, um, and by the way, this is the first time I'm actually seeing it, the, the, the document right there. So, um, but, uh, but I expressed those concerns and uh, they, they, they took them all to heart, you know, uh, um, and, uh, you know, so I think it was some good input that I was able to provide for them. So um, I know I've got a couple of questions on the, on the two bullet points. So, but, but before I make those comments, I want to see if anybody else has got comments as well. I don't have a comment about the body necessarily, but um, as someone who has written many codes of conduct and they're generally very long and lengthy documents, um, this to me seems more like a specific issue. A code of conduct policy covers a whole lot of things. So I'm just wondering if that's just a draft name also, or if, if it's gonna be more specific in the name, like a code of ethics, in regard to conflict of interest kind of thing. Yeah, uh, no, you picked up on a new nuance of this um, and all of that is true. Um, the policy was originally drafted because there was a concept that there may be more that goes into the code of conduct at, at some point in time. So this is a start. Uh, it's not, a, you know, it's a work in progress probably. These were the couple big issues that seemed to be cycling through this last year. Um, but on the other note, too, um, when we bring this back, we may look at just changing that title for the time being until we do add to it. So it's clear on what it's represent, not all the conduct, but specific. Right, because conflict of interest is, is a part yeah. of a code of conduct policy yeah. in general. I think over time, this will grow probably some. Um, but for the time being right now, we're really only addressing those two issues. So right. perhaps the title change is, is appropriate. We'll appreciate that feedback. So I'll, I guess I'll ask one of my first question is, is it the, the operative word on both of the bullet points is affiliated. And I guess, so my question is, is how is either the city attorney or, or what legal definition of affiliation is applicable in this, in this case? Cause I can, I, a couple different, uh, instances of where I have come down and spoke before um, commissions come up and I'm like, 
oh gosh, you know, now I wasn't a commissioner back then. I was just regular, you know, this is even pre GPAC, I think. Um, you know, so like one example that comes to mind was um, uh, I happened to play in a local band and uh, the, the venue we were playing at, um, a restaurant on Winchester, um, their conditional use permit didn't allow for live music. And so they, they then wanted to change that. They went before the planning commission and wanted to, you know, get that approved. And I was literally one of three people that spoke on their behalf, you know. Now I did that because I'm in one of the bands that played at that venue. Is that? Yeah, I think that's that's one of the, I think that would be applicable in this instance. I think that's an affiliation. That's a band that you're in and you're yeah. representing that band. I think this policy would say, have someone else from the band come and represent that. Okay. I, well, no, nobody I, from the band. No. If that were the case. No, no. No, that's not to say that the. Oh, you mean now, if it now, being a uh, being a commissioner, yeah. Now, now you would say me. I'm uh, a commissioner. It's not appropriate for me to represent you. Oh, okay, you need okay. to find the drummer, or the singer, yeah, to come God, represent God, us okay. because I can't. Okay. I think so, that would follow. Affiliation, you have to speak on behalf of your band for any reason. Right. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, but in that case, that in that case, when you're they're appearing before a board or commission, yeah, got it. You, under this, you wouldn't you wouldn't represent them. Okay. Well, in and out Burger found another location, so we don't have to worry yeah. about that. <laughs> you could, could you just speak as a citizen and resident and not bring yes. up the fact that yes. you're, right? You, yes. you would just say, yes. I live at this address yes. and- You never give up your right to speak individually. Yeah. And in all of these cases, if you go and say, I'm just here on my own behalf yeah. and I'm speaking on my own behalf, right. um, then that's not a problem. Okay. It's so when it's you not, say, it's not the just to let you know, I'm a planning commissioner from Campbell, but I'm not talking as a planning commissioner. <laughs> then you start getting into that gray area where you're really, it up at the next and I ask the purpose, what is the purpose of you telling them that you really want, is it really important? Well, it's important. And, and we've had this discussion. It's important because I say that I want you to respect my opinion. Yeah. So I get more respect by having that title. And that's where that inappropriateness comes out. And you're, you're trying to live. Yeah, you're. It's power, right? You're and if I was going to provide feedback, I think that maybe that particular aspect it'd be nice if it was spelled out a little bit or more, either more explicitly or just at all. So. Sorry, sorry. Um, it, it is a difficult situation to do something of this nature without giving a specific example, because then you lock yourself into one way or the other when you give a specific example um, and trying not to be vague at the same time. It's a tough. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's right. That means anything beyond that could be okay. That's the problem with examples. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think the term conflict of interest is is I mean it's self-explanatory to a lot of people, but it's not self-explanatory to everybody. And so um, that kind of is where the focus I, I would think would go is, is what defines conflict of interest in this case would be identifying yourself as a certain type of person 
as a means to, you know, garner approval or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's an okay. There were some examples in addition. These are things that are prohibited. Perhaps we do add in some more examples. Right. To help elicit these specific things. That you're saying. Like as a commissioner, you are a representative of, therefore, yeah. affiliated to, or whatever. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know at the last meeting we end up having um, our city clerk made a plea uh, for. Uh, yeah. So, I got somebody interested today. Now you went interested. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to remind everybody to please turn on their mics when they're speaking, or I won't be able to capture anything that you're saying when I'm trying to do the minutes from the recording. So, <laughs> so does that cover everything that we needed to? Yeah, I, I appreciate the feedback. That. I took some notes um, at, at, at the, the language, the title, the term of the, whether it's a code of conduct policy or what, we'll look at that. Mm. Um, Chris, your, your comment about um, the, what affiliation means, uh, and then perhaps even looking at some examples to help uh, give, give some uh, better breath here. So did I summarize that correctly? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that feedback. Yeah, thank you. All right. So moving on, um, we have no unfinished business, which is good. Um, moving on to our next meeting item uh good of the game um let's see we've got oktoberfest this weekend yay um i will be working the dunk a cop booth <laughs> on behalf of the campbell police foundation and our police department so uh i think it's uh i think it's going to be our chief and several captains so up for target practice um let's see what else um, anybody else have any good of the game? I will tease that I, I have one for next month, but I, it's going to involve uh, a, a, a visual presentation. So about our art boxes and kind of uh, how, how, how do I put it? A uh, Paul Harvey style, uh, kind of the rest of the story kind of background on one of our, our art boxes. So, um, but yeah, anybody else? No. Okay. All right. Then moving on. Uh, let's see. Subcommittee reports. Um, let's see. Campbell Cares and Neighborhood Refresh. We haven't talked in a while. So we, I know, I don't, I think I'm safe in saying we don't have anything new to report. Um, it's just us left on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, I, I was going to bring up um, we, at some point, we need to do, we need to look at or address the subcommittee assignments. Um, I know, I, well, right, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Um, kind of on hold. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, so uh, I do, oh, I do wanna report though, I had a nice conversation with our new community development director, Rob, and I kind of gave him the, the elevator pitch uh, spiel about our, our intentions for Campbell Cares, and he's interested and wants to discuss it. So he's got some ideas. So because we had a conversation about some a couple things this this week, and uh, he does he wants to hear more. So he's curious about it. And um, and Randy Sweet, our code enforcement guy, is completely on board. Cool. So he likes the fact that if, if he has an alternative to <laughs> code enforcement, uh, 
you know, that involves community involvement and, and, and things, you know, neighbors helping neighbors kind of thing. He's, he's all for it. He loves that idea. So, um, uh, all right. So then moving on, uh, Capture Campbell. So we are, um, we've extended the um, deadline <clears throat> to the end of the year. So we're going to push it out 30 days and then with departure of several um, folks and subcommittees being <laughs> vacant and, you know, whatnot. Um, so website has been updated. Diana, I don't know on the city site if it's linked or if we have verbiage up there, but um, between you and I, if we could just change and make sure that, that we um, either... Yeah, I know that the um, the Capture Campbell website is updated, but um, the city would just need to double check that. 31st of December. So it's going to kind of, you know, cross, it's, it's gonna cross, you know, different grades and, and things because of the rules and how it's, uh, you know, it is done by age, so we don't really have to worry about what grade they're in or if they've, you know, gone to the next level or, or whatnot. So as long as they're 18 when they submit or under, then it's fine. So even if they're in college or, you know, whatnot. So um, that's it for Capture Campbell for now. We do need to, you know, continue to um, target the schools and also the um, sponsors. Um, and then probably get uh, a new calendar together for when that's going to all come down and, you know, commission meeting and judging and all of that. So um, anything else on that? I, I don't think <laughs> we've had, we haven't met. <laughs> we've been out it's for been a long time. I yeah. know. I know. <laughs> so apologies for that. Um, and then I guess we can, I can move straight to explore art, yeah. um, which again, we are very light these days and we will have to wait until we get the new commissioners and um, the subcommittee assignments parsed out. Mm -hmm. I think that's just kind of on hold for now. All right, um, anything else that we need to cover? I think, yeah, uh, I was like, we don't have any street name stuff. We kind of discuss neighborhood associations but yeah it should actually for the um, neighborhood association grant assistance program should we um do we need to have a discussion about that and review the application the um, online application and thing do we did you get any feedback for last year with the new you know form that was shorter and so because it's not on the agenda oh, we sorry. really yeah we can't discuss it during this meeting but okay. we can certainly agendize it for the next okay month. sorry i, oh, okay. I thought all the subcommittees sorry yeah i, I didn't you. look carefully so yeah we can talk about it next meeting all right then it looks like we're ready to adjourn uh the regular meeting of the civic improvement commission is now adjourned at is at uh, 827, 826. Uh, the next regularly, uh, next regularly scheduled Civic Improvement Commission meeting is Thursday, November 10th, 2022. Thank you. Hey. Uh, yeah. it's been, it's our summer social. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we're right. I know. The one that I didn't get to do because of my little, that was my COVID scare. Oh, we, oh yeah. wow. Everyone in my office had it. I didn't get it, but I thought I was going to, so I didn't well, do sure. it. Oh, yeah. 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 There we go. Yeah. 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 There we go. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Angelie. you. Nice meeting.